people who don't know about writing say. Uh, my family developed the idea that all my books were actually about my younger brother, and I don't know where they got that idea. So I haven't begun killing off characters just to put that one down. Uh, but they just didn't, couldn't imagine somehow that you could create everything completely outside of yourself. It's completely a new thing. It just didn't. It's the Shakespeare problem. Yeah, it's like everything really represents, you know, the conflict between Catholicism and Protestantism, etc. England or something. Like, you know, it's a, it's a, I just think that it's a failure. And with your example of Robert Jordan, it's a really a failure of imagination, that's all. And if he had either worked on it some more or if his editor had forced him to do it, it would have been better but because that's that's just that's just carelessness. I'm sorry. It's like making every every character blonde. You know, well, it's only worse if they're set in Sweden. I've been, told, <laughs> I've been told the theory of why he did that is that if you met his wife, you would understand. You <laughs> <laughs> have psychological problems. I you could, the case would be that you should work these out in your fiction. That's a separate issue. Yeah. Yeah. No, but there are still issues. I do think when, when I'm writing and I name my characters, all of their names begin with M or H. <laughs> and I get about halfway through the story or the novel, and I say, gee, I can't keep these people straight. No reader is ever going to be. And then I go back and say, OK, have we used a B or a D or for a long time? And to some extent, I do the same thing with characters, um, especially with secondary characters yes. who I'm using for one really narrow purpose. And like the I, guys in the red shirt. Yeah. The red shirt's yeah. almost yeah. the same. Yeah. And yeah. you know that you go with it. But as a conscientious author, you go back and you say, this red shirt is actually going to wear green. Uh, and, and you change the details. You do a, it's not killed, it's only made. <laughs> um, but I do think that there is a tendency, especially for the characters who I'm not using, to truly um, motivate the story, uh, to have them be vanilla. Um, but I would also say that that's exactly what the problem is in the Robert Jordan uh, books, that, that women aren't fulfilling central roles. Uh, and so, yeah, exactly. Call down the central casting. Mm -hmm. A little funny aside, in my um, in the last book, in, in Lust for Life, which is the last WBMP book, I think the, the characters also appear in the novella that comes right before it, but um, I have an agent, Rosso, and a captain, Henley, and Rosso is Italian for red, and Henley is a type of shirt. <laughs> so you can guess what happens to them. My <laughs> editor didn't notice. This is how I was in notice. It was a little secret in letting you guys in for the first time. This is how we entertain ourselves. On a long run, the keeps the writer happy. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, I think as far as just making sure the characters differentiate themselves, part of it is just taking the time and just spending the time with them. And that can, I mean, often, I know a lot, sometimes in my first drafts, especially if it's the beginning of a new series, um, the characters will not have a lot of depth until I've gone through the whole story the, the first time and figured out what it is actually all about and what each character's role is and what, um, they, they, there are some exercises that writers use to get to know their characters better, like interview sheets and things like that. But I never do it. Yeah, yeah. I never do any of those things until after, until I'm getting ready to rewrite the book, and that's usually a pretty extensive rewrite because I just, you know, if I'm on page one, I have no idea what these what these people are about until I've actually seen them in action and put them in in, in situations where they have to make choices, and then it, it's often very surprising. Uh, in a good way, what, what kinds of choices, or at least in an exciting way, um, what kind of choices they'll make under duress. I was recently reading a novel that shall go unnamed uh, that had about two dozen extra characters. Um, they were all named, and I thought at first that I needed to keep track of who this person, that person, and this third, fourth, fifth, twenty-fourth person was. Um, in the end, the only people who mattered were the protagonist and the antagonist. And all these other characters were there, I think, as sort of salutes to high school friends and other people. And they didn't do anything. And they were absolutely undifferentiated in the story. Were they, it wasn't a historical. I mean, I could say that it was a historical novel. You'd have to have, you know, Wolsey and all the gang. But it was really Henry VIII. You know? you didn't, uh, this was a... Um, young adult fantasy novel. And it, to me, read that the author hadn't con 
committed to figuring out what the story was. So there were all these extra people in case we needed to send a red shirt out, in case we need, and oh, we didn't need all that, but. But should you fix that on the rewrite? I mean, that's the whole point of rewrite. In my opinion, you should. Um, and in this particular book, um, fitting in with the topic of this panel, uh, they were almost all female characters. Um, and the book was written by a man. Um, and I don't know that that was the direct effect. This was also a first novel. And so it's entirely possible that this was an inexperienced author who was trying to leave himself with a variety of possibilities in the direction that both this novel and potential sequels could go. Uh, but it also read as this mass of um, Star Wars stormtroopers who were standing in the back, and if you could, you know, check the tag inside their shirt, you'd know what their name was. But otherwise, um, they really didn't have any separate identity. At this point, I think I'd like to throw it open and see if anyone out there has questions, because I'm not certain what our time it is, and I want to make sure that the audience has a chance. 